reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Zion said, The Lord has forsaken me. My Lord has forgotten me. Can a mother forget her infant? Be without tenderness for the child of her womb. Even should she forget, I will never forget you. Verbum da mini. Reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, thus should one regard us as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Now it is of course required of stewards that they be found trustworthy. It does not concern me in the least that I be judged by you or any human tribunal. I do not even pass judgment on myself. I am not conscious of anything against me, but I do not thereby stand acquitted. The one who judges me is the Lord. Therefore, do not make any judgment before the appointed time until the, until the Lord comes, for he will bring to light what is hidden in darkness and will manifest the motives of our hearts and then everyone will receive praise from God. <clears throat> Verbum da meaning.
Dominus Vobiscum. Et Lexio Sancti Evangelii Secundum Mateum. Gloria Jesus said to his disciples, No man can serve two masters. He will either hate one and love the other, or be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear? Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds in the sky. Do they, that, do they not sow or reap? They gather nothing into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are not you more important than they? Can any of you be by worrying at a single moment to your lifespan? Why are you anxious about clothes? Learn from the way the wildflowers grow. They do not work or spin. But I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was clothed like one of them. If God so clothes the grass of the field, which grows today and is thrown into the oven tomorrow, will he not much more provide for you, O little of faith? So do not worry and say, what are we to eat, or what are we to drink? Or what are we to wear? All these things the pagans seek. Your heavenly Father knows what you need. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be given you besides. Do not worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Sufficient for a day is its own evil. Verbum domini. catch my breath after that one. The last month, we've been going through a Sermon on the Mount. And this is really the fifth week on the Sermon on the Mount. If you think about it, the Sermon on the Mount starts at Matthew chapter 5, and we're in Matthew chapter 6. So we're going very slowly through the Lord's teaching on the Sermon on the Mount, which is really the heart of the gospel. We can say the Sermon on the Mount is the kernel of the gospel. And first of all, remember we talked about the Beatitudes, all the Beatitudes the Lord gives us, which first among the Beatitudes are, blessed are the poor in spirit, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs to remember that we're to completely rely on God, that we're to be poor, poor in spirit, to realize that our next breath comes from God, that our next heartbeat comes from God, that everything that we have comes from God. And the next week was 
the invitation to become salt and light, that we are to be witnesses in the world, and that salt is what gives flavor to the world, to a bland world that we're to be, the Lord invites us to be salt and also light. First of all, that Jesus is the light of the world and that in virtue of our relationship with him, in virtue of our Christian life, we're called to be lights in Jesus, to bring that light into the world. And then the next week was ever so hard lesson on forgiveness, about the Christian lesson of forgiveness, really the heart of the gospel. One of the hardest things about being a follower and a, a disciple of Jesus Christ, isn't it, is forgiveness, about letting go. And how many of us have been hurt in life, perhaps by people? I preached on Christian friendship this week, and even sometimes people that we think are our friends perhaps can hurt us. And that hurts even more, doesn't it? When someone that we think is our friend tramples upon us or loses our trust through just completely shattering that relationship. It's like throwing a, a wrench into a really well-oiled machine. Friendship is supposed to be a very beautiful thing, but when friendship is taken as like a, an ax at or something, it hurts even more so in the human heart. You know, there's an old saying that God always forgives, man sometimes forgives, meaning we're imperfect, we can't forgive completely, perfectly like Jesus, and we rely on him to learn how to forgive, but ultimately there's, there's always going to be people that let us down even our friends, even those closest to us, spouses. And we're to forgive, not to hold on to grudges, because that in the end ultimately ends up hurting us. It never hurts the other person. Lack of forgiveness in the end only ends up eating away at us. And then last week was love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Love your enemies. Again, all of these lessons are difficult life lessons. Jesus really goes right to the heart of the gospel. Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. And he tells us to be holy, to be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. And that really means to have the same end as God, to have the same end as Christ on the cross, that his vision was on the vision of the Father, and that we're to have that same vision, that same end as God. Doesn't mean that we don't mess up. Doesn't mean that we don't fall or we will fall short but we're always to come back to God and to aim at that, at that kind of end, at that vision, to forgive again and to love our enemies. And today, the Lord tells us about we cannot serve two masters. And this is we think about this, it's common sense. But I think all of us need to come back to the reality that 
who is our master? Because all of us have things that we, and pla things, persons, persons, places, things that we put before the Lord, that we allow to intrude, really, in our relationship with the Lord. And if we think about what the word means, it really means being divided within oneself, having two heads, so to speak. Or this word anxiety or lack of trust that we see in the Gospels, the root word of the word anxiety means being of two minds. And St. Paul reminds us, remember, that we are to have the mind of Christ, that we're literally to have, be one in mind with Christ. And he says, do not conform yourselves to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, so that you may do the will of God, what is good, pleasing and perfect. That we're to have this one-mindedness. And that's difficult in the Christian walk. It's not easy. And we're always to remind ourselves that, again, who is the master of my life, of our lives? And this will really govern everything that we do when we put first the master, capital M master, not all the lowercase m masters that we allow to intrude in our relationship with the Lord, but who is the master? Who do we allow to sit on the throne of my own heart? Hopefully it's the Lord. But if we're all honest, a lot of the times we allow other things to intrude in that relationship, in that peace that Christ came to give us. What is our ultimate focus again? We can ask ourselves this question day in and day out. What is my ultimate focus? And Jesus is compelling us to choose. He's saying either or. He's not, he's not saying both and today. You cannot serve both God and mammon. He's asking us to make a definitive choice. And it's hard to make a definitive choice, even harder today in the world that we live in, in the culture that we live in, to make a definitive choice to keep our eyes fixed on that def definitive choice on Jesus. I invite you to just think just for a second what masters you. There's many, every single one of us can go down and there's something in our lives that perhaps sways our heart that masters our heart. What is it? Do we bring that to the Lord? Do we ask the Lord for the grace to overcome that, that mastery? We all have to make decisions about many things in life. And when it comes down to it, there has to be one thing that we all desire eternal life. The Lord in this teaching is not saying that we're not to be concerned about the decisions of life, all the decisions that we have to make about the nitty-gritty about life. But really to put him first. Seek first ye the kingdom of God and all else will be given unto you. Really, it's about ordering our life, ordering our priorities. 
And we can allow, again, many things to govern our life, to rule and to dictate our life, to allow fear. Many things we allow, we allow all these things to rule our life. And then that's where anxiety enters in. That's where fear enters into the equation. But do we really have, again, that end in mind, eternal life? That should be our end. Do we think about that every day when we wake up? I don't think I do, first thing. Do I think about eternal life? About being with God in heaven? The opening prayer said something very beautiful today that addresses this. It says, grant us, O Lord, we pray, that the course of our world may be directed by your peaceful rule. That the course of our world, that is, all of us, the course of our lives, may be directed by your peaceful rule. that Jesus is our master. And when we allow worry to enter into the equation, what does this accomplish, really? The Lord says in the gospel, we do not gain one day by worrying. We do not gain anything in our life by worry. Now, sometimes you may think, easier said than done, Lord, right? It's hard. Padre Pio says, pray, hope, and don't worry. It's a good slogan, but it's, it's hard when it comes down to it. It's hard not to allow that worry to enter in and to creep into our hearts. And Jesus also says in the Gospels, fear is useless. What is needed is trust. Fear is useless. What is needed is trust. And that we're not to worry about our life or the many situations that come into our life. Listen to Jesus' words that he says in the Gospel. And which of you, by being anxious, can add one cubit to his lifespan of life. And why are you anxious about clothing? And again, our food and so on and so forth. You can add to the list, I'm worried about this. Why are we worried about these things? Jesus wants us to see in this gospel that life is more than these things. If he provides for the birds of the sky for food for them, he's going to provide for us in his providence. And we're to look at our life as a gift from God and that everything that we have is a gift from God and everything that we have is under his providential care his governance, again, his peaceful rule. In the first reading, the prophet Isaiah said beautifully, could a mother forget her infant? And then the Lord reminds us, even if a mother does forget her infant, I will not forget you. I think that's a key phrase maybe for us to ponder upon as we enter into Lent next week, this week, I will not forget you. The Lord never forgets us. The Lord never abandons us. And he says that we're to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Again, notice that he says seek first the kingdom of God.
And this is one of the Beatitudes. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. And turning this around, not just us hungering and thirsting for righteousness, but the Lord hungers and thirsts for you. The Lord hungers and thirsts for our faith, for our hope and our love. And he wants us to be holy. I was looking up an acronym last night. I was trying to find an acronym for trust. And I don't expect you all to remember this, but I'll just, just go through it very quickly because this is really the heart of the gospel when you think about what the Lord is talking about in being anxious and allowing anxiousness and fear to intrude in our life and to take over our hearts sometimes. Trust, T, turning over every aspect of my life over to the care of God. Every aspect of my life, turning over every aspect of my life over to God. R, realizing that he already has a perfect plan for my life. Sometimes we want to make the plans. We want to write out how it's to be done and present it to the Lord and say, here, <laughs> it's, already, it's already packaged, ready to go. All you have to do is follow my way. <laughs> but in the end, we know that that's not going to lead to real true happiness. God's ways, in the end, lead to true peace and happiness. And you, understand that I may not always understand. It's a good line of wisdom. Understand that I will not always understand. I will not always have all the answers. That I need to keep looking to the Lord. Again, I need to be of one mind, not two minds. You need to have one master, not two masters or three masters or four masters. One master. And our master is Christ. And S, seeking his will at every step of the way of our lives. And if Finally, T, thanking him when things don't turn out as expected. Thanking him when things in our lives do not turn out as expected, the way that we wanted them to turn out. Solanus Casey used to say to thank God in advance. That's why they called him Deo Gracias. He would always say, Deo gracias, in advance, even before he knew the outcome. Deo gracias. Thanks be to God. <coughs> St. Teresa of Avila says that let nothing disturb you. Let nothing make you afraid. All things are passing. God alone never changes. Patience gains all things. If you have God, you will want for nothing. God alone suffices. That if we have God truly, if God is our master, first and foremost, then we realize that everything else will have its proper place. Easier said than done, right? These are things we need to practice every single day of our lives. Submitting to God and allowing Christ to be our master. If you have God, you will want for nothing. Again, Teresa of Avila says, God alone suffices, or God alone is enough.
in another translation. Enough, sufficient. That if we have God, that is enough.